Um, hello, I'm Andrew, um, and I'm going to show you something kind of cool, in my opinion anyway, really quite cool. So, um, for those that were following me on Twitter the other night, you saw that I tweeted a picture of, oh, I'm going to boot a Raspberry Pi off a 32 megabyte SD card. And it said 32, and people thought, oh, it's 32 gigabyte. No, it was 32 megabyte. Then I discovered the Raspberry Pi apparently doesn't support 32 megabyte SD cards, full stop. So I had to sadly go one up. Um, I've now got 128 megabytes, if you can read that. Whew, I know, 128 megabytes. No hope of booting a Raspberry Pi off that. Well, it probably will boot. Um, so Amy, uh, this is my Glamour assistant, Amy, and she will set all that up for me um, while I chat away. Um, oh, yeah, you need the screen. Um, so, um, oh, yeah. So, what is about to happen is hopefully we will get a Raspberry Pi. Um, and this Raspberry Pi has this tiny SD card. Um, and all that SD card has on it is literally just the Linux kernel and all the bootloader files for the Raspberry Pi. That's it. Um, now, this demo could fall apart. It has done that quite a bit um, beforehand. Um, so it's only just working there, so it could fall apart. But what's basically going to happen is we have the Pi. Um, I also have, uh, let's see, this one here. So we Wi-Fi box. So the laptop is connected to the Wi-Fi. Um, the laptop is running Debian. So I've got a Debian server running on there. Um, and on that Debian server, there we go. Ignore the purpleness. We don't know what's up with purple, but um, maybe it's just the color for today. But we've got a Debian server on there. And when the Pi boots up here, it's going to ask the Debian server across the network, give me an operating system, please, right now, um, because I don't have one. So in its, in the, on one of the config files on the root of the Raspberry Pi, or on the, ba on the boot partition, we have it pointed to the IP address of the server. Um, now, it has just started booting, um, and we will get into a lovely login screen in a wee second. Now, why, why is this important that this Raspberry Pi is booting off my laptop? Why, why bother with that? Um, because it doesn't just have to be one Raspberry Pi. Have a wee think here. Let's imagine we have, this is a classroom, a really big classroom. Um, and let's say we have 30, 50 Raspberry Pis in the classroom. And say you're a teacher, and you have to manage those Raspberry Pis to teach kids with. Well, um, what, what if you've got you know, 50 Raspberry Pis? Well, what do you do if you want to install a piece of software? What do you do? Well, you could go around every single Raspberry Pi, sudo apt get install gimp, for example. Um, and you wait, and you hammer your school's internet connection, downloading it each time onto each of these Raspberry Pis. <coughs> and that will take you, you know, couple of hours. Or what you could do is you could set it up like this, and you build your Raspberry Pi, your virtual Raspberry Pi on the server. And as the Raspberry Pi boots, it goes and asks the server for an operating system and boots off the server. This means you maintain one perfect operating system image. And every time you want to install a new piece of software, you just stick it on the server. You reboot all your Pis, and poof, you have that piece of software. Um, now, this Raspberry Pi is booting off a 128 megabyte SD card. Anybody think that's kind of cool, yeah? Yeah! <laughs> um, is booting off a 128 megabyte SD card. Um, and we can load normal applications. Even if they are in purple, they are still slightly usable. So in this case, we've got Scratch. We did have Scratch. Um, and yeah. So we booted this off this perfect SD card image. Thank you very much, Amy. You can go sit down now. Um, <laughs> we booted this off this perfect SD card image. Um, now, actually, I need this back so I can show you all my wonderful slides that I definitely didn't make on the flight over this morning. Definitely didn't do that. Um, so I've told you what I've just done. I've told you what's just happened. Now for the slightly unfun bit. You've got to listen about me and who I am. Um, I meant to go back to this. I'm 17. I'm from Northern Ireland. I'm Northern Ireland's youngest ever STEM, ambas STEM, STEM ambassador. I teach kids, lots of kids, Raspberry Pi related stuff. I teach them Arduino stuff, and I teach them just fun stuff, really. And I'm a Pi geek. Well, that was easy. Um, so, yeah, we've already done that. What just happened? Well, that Raspberry Pi just booted off 128 megabytes of SD card. Um, so, um, what did I use? Well, I had my Debian server. I had a network switch. In this case, it's a really small network switch. I had my Raspberry Pi, and I had my tiny SD card. With the key bit there, is right up there. 
That is the key thing to all of this, is we have a network cable that plugs it in. Now, classrooms already have network cables plugged in. You know, if you go to any computer room, there's already ports around the room, so you can quite easily just, there's always piles of spare ports. Um, that's one thing, it's one perfect, that's one great thing, so we've got the operating system. But then we've got the other two cool things that you might have just seen as it came up. When, when it booted up there, Amy was presented with a lovely login screen. Did we see that? Yeah? Um, a lovely login screen. So that is part of the LTSP project. This is all um, based off the LTSP project, the Linux Terminal Server project. If, you, if there's any, um, I've talked to a few people today and they know what that is. Not many people do. Um, it's a whole pile of scripts that, uh, that basically allow you to create an operating system and boot it in a classroom. Um, so it comes with a nice little login screen. But then, what about that other problem of using a Pi in a classroom? Well, kids say each kid has an SD card. Well, the coursework for that kid that they're doing, or that pupil, is on that SD card. What if that SD card fails? Has anyone in here had an SD card failure? Yeah. What if you were that pupil, and you'd spent hours and hours and hours on your wonderful coursework for your GCSE or whatever, and your SD card failed? Then you get a very harsh lesson about the value of backups. Well, yes. Um, <coughs> But the pr problem is here, we've got 30, 30 SD cards around the room that all have different work on it. You know, all the kids work, and if it, if it fails, well, you've lost it all. Um, so the other cool thing this does is the kid's user account is installed on, is on the server, is not on the Pi. So that you log in, you can log in any Raspberry Pi in the classroom, you're not stuck to a Raspberry Pi, and you have your stuff. It's all in one little lump of a folder um, on the server. So if you're the teacher and you want to you know, make a backup of every kid's work, you just back up one folder. That's it. If you want to, say, grab a kid's work, say they forgot to hand in their coursework, they forgot to print it out, well, you just grab it out of their folder. That's it. Um, so that's basically what LTSP does. Um, this, is called, this is what is called a fat client. So a lot of people have heard of a thin client. Has anyone here in here heard of a thin client? OK, that's basically where it's a screen into the server. Um, the Pi can do that too, but what we've actually got set up here is a fat client. That means all the processing is done on the Pi. So the Pi is like a normal Pi, except its hard drive is basically virtually attached onto it, like it thinks it's there, but it's not. It's actually on the server. Um, now, where's the advantage in that? Why don't I just use a big server and, you know, thin clients? GPI opens. You have no access to that if you don't, because your applications are running on the server. Camera port, no access to that. Um, so that's basically what, what the, uh, the, Raspberry Pi, uh, the Raspberry Pi LTSP project is. So we've, or I've kind of made a little um, program that sticks on the end of it um, that builds your Raspberry Pi operating system for you. If you are a teacher in here and you're slightly interested in this, um, do let me know at the end and I might give you a hand setting it up. Um, we have tested this in a classroom already. So we have um, Ben Smith. I don't know if anyone here knows Ben Smith. Manchester Voodoo or um, something like that. Um, he's tested this in his classroom and has now decided he's moving to it completely because he can now store his coursework on the server and all that. Um, and so his pupils can now do their GCSE coursework on a Raspberry Pi because he has the faith that, the, that it won't, he won't lose all their work. So that's basically what this is. Um, yeah. <laughs>